Sn That's drunk. Before I talk about Nickelodeon Guts for Super Nintendo, I have to be upfront with something. Outside of maybe two or three shows, I really did not like Nickelodeon. Ren and Stimpy was great because it was completely different from anything else on TV, Double Dare was a lot of fun, and I liked the occasional episode of Rocco's Modern Life, but really, Nickelodeon was just not my thing, and that includes Nickelodeon Guts. I just never watch stuff like this. The TV show ran from 1992 to 95, and it was a pretty successful obstacle course show along the same lines as wild and crazy kids, but I saw exactly none of it, and suffice to say, I did not even think of playing the Super Nintendo game when it first came out in November of 1994, and that's probably a good thing, because this game is pretty bad. This one was exclusive for the Super Nintendo and developed by Viacom New Media, who made some pretty good stuff with Phantom 2040, Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage, and Rocco's Modern Life Spunky's Dangerous Day. All three of those games completely outclass this thing, though. The way Nickelodeon Guts works is that it's broken down into two different game modes, Action Sports and Elastic Sports, or at least that's how the manual refers to them. And there's five events total to choose from with an unlockable sixth event, the Aggro Crag, although the three action events are exactly the same, and the three elastic events are all also pretty much exactly the same. Action Sports is your typical obstacle course stuff, and it's essentially just a platformer where you jump around, dodge stuff, and climb stuff, and try to get to the end and post a good time. Elastic Sports is this. You're tied up by bungee cords and you flail around trying to put a ball in a hoop or something like that. That's all well and good, and it's a decent idea for a game, but good lord, the controls here are freaking terrible. I swear it's like this game was made by people who had never played a video game before. Momentum while running is wonky, jumping is wonky, the hit detection when grabbing onto stuff is wonky. I mean, come on, just grab the mother flippin' pole already. What is wrong with you? Oh, it turns out I don't even need to bother with the pole at all. It's just there for the sake of being there, I guess. So the game at least makes up for its terrible controls by having really bad level design. Just grab the Oh, man, grab it! I'm jumping right into it! What is your problem? The issue here is that if you're too low when you jump, you're guaranteed to miss the next rope, but if you're too high, you'll just bounce off the ceiling and miss anyway. Oh hey, can I just drown myself instead? That seems like a lot more fun. Seriously though, the controls here feel drunk. In fact, this game might make more sense if you played it drunk, but I can think of other things I'd rather do drunk, like play Bubsy. The elastic sports aren't that much fun either, but at least the controls have a little more consistency. They're consistently bad, but at least they have a certain logic to them that you can eventually figure out and get used to. I mean, it's actually possible to make baskets in this minigame, for example. There's a meter here that you have to charge by holding down on the D-pad. Let go and you go careening into the basket, or net, or whatever, and you just kind of fling the ball somewhere near your target by pressing the B button. You can also do trick shots with other buttons. Wouldn't this work better with the side view? The depth perception here is terrible. The big problem, however, is jumping back onto the platform. You're almost always going to stumble, and that's going to cost you time. What's especially telling about this game is that there's no computer AI opponents. If you play this one single player, it's just you. I guess I should mention some of the strengths this game has. I mean, it does look like the show itself. The colors are pretty much spot on. The sprite animation is okay. And there's eight contestants to choose from that each have different stats, even though they all look exactly the same during gameplay. It's also two-player versus, so you can make a friend suffer through this if you're feeling like being a bad person, but I recommend against doing that ever. Do, do, do you have it? Do, 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 do you have it? Go! Do I have it? No. Why would I want it? Keep your guts away from me. So yeah, unfortunately Nickelodeon Guts is another one of those obstacle course type games where they try and cram in five different minigames into one supposedly cohesive package, and they all end up failing. In other words, it's a lot like the Super Nintendo American Gladiators game, only this one might be worse. Really, there's two categories of bad games. There's games that you know are gonna suck just from one glance. Stuff like Captain Novelin or Space Ace or Pit Fighter. But then there's bad games that are just really disappointing. Nickelodeon Guts looks good, it represents the show pretty well, and it's a good idea for a game, but the execution here is half-assed and lazily thrown together with really awful controls that may or may not have been designed by a person who never actually tested the game, which ultimately makes this one nothing but a waste of time. I really just want to buy this cartridge so I can throw it in the trash. Avoid this game. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!